In 1948, the world united behind the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. 75 years on, we continue this noble pursuit here at Chatham House. Meet some of Chatham House's researchers working on the most pressing human rights issues the world is facing, their stories and motivations, and how they seek out multi-stakeholder solutions to 21st century challenges with resolve and innovation. As we celebrate this milestone, we look to inspire the next generation of human rights leaders and advocates. My name is Charu Lata Hogg and I'm an Associate Fellow with the Asia Pacific Program at Chatham House. I suppose if, if I go back and reflect on my career, I started off and would define myself as a dropout journalist. My job was to really bear witness to what was unfolding and happening around me. And I soon realized that this was not sufficient and this was not satisfying just to bear witness to what was happening around me. And therefore, the, the role of advocacy or being part of the change of not just being a silent witness to what was happening, a documenter, but rather somebody who was could action some change was what really inspired me to join the human rights movement. For a long time, I have worked in situations of conflict. I have worked in upholding international human rights law and humanitarian law. But gradually, my work has also exposed me to the specific vulnerabilities that exist for individuals because of the gender paradigm and the gender norms that influence our thinking. So part of this discourse is really beginning to examine how gender plays a role in conflicts and what, what gender-based violence really constitutes. And that has got me very interested in looking at conflict-related sexual violence against men, boys and people of diverse sexual orientations and gender identities. That is a very unexplored area. There are very few responses in place. There's very little documentation. And I suppose I would see my myself as one of the few who are really beginning to unfold and unlock what's happening here and becoming part of addressing and improving responses and prevention for these populations. My name is Khaled Shakari and I work as a research associate with the Middle East and Africa program at Chatham House. One of the most important issues that we face um, in, in, the issue, in the project I work with is accountability. So for example, many of the countries that we work with uh, the, the citizens can't hold their officials, their ruling elite, to account. We try to highlight these issues, we try to see what are the best ways to hold officials accountable, how do citizens participate in the decision-making process, and how do societies be involved more in the governing of their own uh, systems and lives. I usually uh, consider myself as cautiously optimistic, and um, uh, by looking at the glass half full, by trying to look at the good that's happening, uh, it inspires me to do even more good. Hello, my name is Katarina Busel. I'm a Ukrainian international lawyer and at Chatham House I was a fellow with a Russia Eurasia program where I researched the avenues for Ukraine's transitional justice policy to grapple with the consequences of Russia's aggression. As a lawyer, I work predominantly on the documentation and analysis of war crimes, crimes against humanity and alleged genocide perpetrated amid Russia's aggression against my home country, Ukraine. It has been an immense experience of engaging with the best professionals in the field at Chatham House to try and see how the experiences from across the globe could be relevant for conflict affected Ukraine. My name is Kyle Parks, I'm from Northern Ireland. I sit on the panel of young advisors at Chatham House. The work that I do with Chatham House is very fo much focused on its future generation work. Um, this is much, very much about a bringing together early career and young people to address a number of the challenges that we face uh, across borders because of course these are all multi-generational uh, problems and so the solutions need to be intergenerational. Uh, one of the great things about the range of Chatham House initiatives is that it gives a platform to um, young people, early career experts to engage with Chatham House research agenda, its members and um, all of the political and policy figures who come through the Institute. My name is Yasmin Afina. I'm a research fellow at Chatham House. I sort of saw the unfolding of technological progress and I see that it's such a fast-paced area, but at the same time we need to ensure that human rights are not left behind and no one is left behind. 
I think that human rights have and ought to be the baseline to inform any form of governance and regulatory um, processes. So my work at Chatham House tries to address and overcome these challenges in human rights and tech in a way that we best do it and by convening, convening discussions and thought and try to sort of foster this common thinking from all across the globe and also in a multi-stakeholder way. You need multi-stakeholder processes and that are multidisciplinary to ensure that everyone is sitting at the, around the same table and all working towards a common goal that is preserving human rights in the light of technological progress. What are the lessons we are learning at the moment? We are le learning massive lessons of inspiration from what's happening in Ukraine. We're learning massive lessons from what's happening in Myanmar, from the women who go out and protest in Afghanistan in a very difficult context. Never give up to the face of oppression, to the face of aggression. Just stand your own. There are enough people who will stand by you and support you, who care for human rights and who care for non-discrimination. One of the most important lessons that uh, we can teach the next generation is to look into uh, what happened in the past and try to learn from it and try to apply it in the future. The best, not just a lesson, but probably inspiration that we could take for the future younger generations is again to take uh, human rights as a great gift that we have struggled for, but also something that we owe great responsibility towards. And also the realization that they expand and they that grow. And it's not just about preserving them and guarding them, it's seeing how uh, the new areas of discrimination might appear and how we should be alert to them. We are celebrating 75 years um, of the Universal Declaration itself, but we're also celebrating 75 years of human rights progress and work to advance that. Um, I find engaging with this heritage and uh, understanding the trials and tribulations of our uh, forebears uh, really helps build my resilience um, and helps me understand the gift that is the protections and institutions that we have today. If I have to say something to you know the future generation of human rights champions and practitioners, just stick to it because the thing is Things may be moving slowly, but they're moving.